Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. My voice is raspy again. I don't know if it's sleeping under this AC or or running around Miami. I did make it to Miami for ABFF. I'm so happy to be here. Can I tell you that I almost didn't make it? My flight was supposed to leave at 12.45 a.m. on Wednesday morning, and I had just closed my suitcase. I zipped it up. I reached in my phone to call my Lyft to take me to the airport, and lo and behold, there was a message that my flight had been canceled. And I was like, are you kidding me, American Airlines? They were not. I had a 12.45 a.m. flight. I was supposed to get into Miami at 9. I was really excited because I would have the whole day to run around Miami. Instead, my flight didn't leave till 10.45 and it was delayed then and I didn't get to Miami until 6. So I missed the whole day and I had big plans for the day. There was a couple errands I wanted to run. I wanted to go get my nails done. They still ain't done. They look raggedy. I got a big event tonight. I'm just going to have clear. That's the best I can do. I took my gel off so I just have plain regular nails. They're clean. That's got to count for something but they ain't done which I feel a way about when I got to go to a fancy event. But such is life. At least I'm in Miami. Um, And I made a friend at the airport. And I got there. There was this giant security guard waiting for me. I have security this weekend. It's kind of wild. He's like 6'8 and large. He's been security for like a bunch of people. He was like running off the names to me. And I was like, oh, I feel very special. But I was standing there with my security. And as it would happen, I turned around and I saw a familiar face. I knew he was going to be here for ABFF because I saw like the list of names of people who were speaking and such. And I went over and I touched his arm. He had on a face mask. We were on the airport. We both did. And I said, Bel Air, yeah? And he said, yeah. I'm trying to do his accent. I can't. Jeffrey from Bel Air, Jimmy. Um, Jimmy had just flown in from London. And we were standing at baggage claim waiting on our flights together. He's a really nice guy. He's, I mean, also absolutely and completely gorgeous. He is more beautiful in person than he is on TV. And he has energy on the show that comes across, but like that Jeffrey energy, like that's just him. Like, I believe he is a good actor, but that Jeffrey energy, that's that's authentic energy that he brings to the table. That's not an act. And I was like, ooh, I wasn't prepared for that. Really nice guy. He's usually he's um he's usually LA based, but he was in London working on a project and he came in for ABFF. Actually, most of the cast is here. I think everybody except who's the young guy that plays Will. I don't know his name in real life cutie pie he's such a cutie pie but I think all of the main cast except him I've seen saw Jazz saw Ashley saw Hillary Coco I'm like obsessed with Coco in real life Aunt Viv Uncle Phil they've all just been like mixing and mingling walking around like they're like normal people and I'm like y'all know y'all are like mega famous on like a hit hit show I mean nobody's bothering them or attacking them and they're still at the phase of celebrity where they seem to like the attention but they're really like nice normal happy to be here people. And I was like, oh, y'all are going to work forever. We spoke previously about how longevity in in most businesses, and and not just entertainment and music, but in nearly everything, people like to work with people who are easy to work with. Jimmy did share that the, the show starts shooting season two, I think September is what he said. So I can't wait. You know how obsessed I was with Bel Air. I think I recapped Every episode, if not on Instagram, then on here, but in some form or fashion, because I like loved that show. It took me a minute to get into it because I was like, do I really need a a reboot of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? As it would turn out, yes. Yes, I did. There's a lot of folks walking around. I was at a party last night for Black Love. Shout out to Cody and Tommy. I really, really love them. I really, really love them and their cute ass kids. I don't think I've ever met their kids. I just feel like I have because I watch them on Instagram. Isn't that crazy how that works? But Cody and Tommy threw a party last night for Black Love. There's tons of people in there. Issa was one of them. She was in there shaking hands and kissing cheeks. She has a new project that I think is debuting. I think the the very first, like, first look ever for Rap Shit. That's her new show on HBO. I think the debut is here at ABFF. Don't quote me on that. But she's here. She's been mixing and mingling. She's gorgeous. I've known Issa for years. Always a pretty woman. But, like, she's in her season. She looks great, and you can tell it looks like a happiness that comes from the inside out. I saw Melinda Williams. She's also down here with Cadillac. We have a big fancy event tonight. I'm recording this on Friday, 2 p.m. EST. Yes, I know it's a late start. I went out last night, and then I was drinking by the pool all day, and then I was out the night before. There's a lot going on. 
I was two seconds from hitting up my producers and being like, can we rerun an old episode today? But a couple of bottles of water later, I feel rehydrated. So I'm good. But we have a big fancy event tonight. One of those sexy Miami rooftop situations. I think it's the Legacy Dinner. I think that's what it is. But I'll be hanging out with Melinda tonight. And then tomorrow, she's hosting a panel, which I'm really, really excited about. One of her panelists is Trevante Rhodes. I would like it very much if he showed up in his drawers. But I have a sinking feeling that he may be fully dressed tomorrow. Womp womp. Um, And the other panelist is the Yaya. The Yaya is here. And he will be on Melinda's panel. And I was like, why does she get to host the men's panel? Why can't I host the men's panel? No worries. I'm going to sneak my ass backstage, though. I know that much. I'm going to be a can I get a hug ass chick tomorrow. I'm just letting y'all know. He can sue me for me too later, but I'm going to get my hug. Damn it. Him and Yaya. But I'm excited to see them tomorrow. There's so much going on this weekend. At this point in time, I have been to no panels because I got in late on Wednesday. All I did was go to dinner on Wednesday night. And then Thursday, like I got up late because I'm still on L.A. time. There was a panel I wanted to go to yesterday. Some of my friends were speaking on it and I wanted to pull it together. I just couldn't. So I ended up sitting out by the pool. I met some very lovely gentlemen from New Jersey. So I struck up a conversation with a nice man named Mr. Brown. We got to talking about Ghana. He actually went to the wedding of a friend of a friend. He knew the groom. My friend is friends with the bride who I met last time I was there. She just got married. So actually, I think me and the guy were in Ghana at the same time. That said, he's an American. He lives in Jersey. He and his friends do not work in entertainment, but they come to Miami every year for ABFF. They don't get passes to the festival. They just come to hang out because everyone and their mom is down here and there's a bunch of parties and it's always a good time. So we were hanging out by the pool, having some drinks, and they were like, what you drinking? And I was like, oh, I just got a rosé. And they were like, is that what you want? You want something else? And I was like, well, well, you know, what else you got? And they were like, come on. And I was like, where are we going? Because I don't just blindly follow nobody. I was like, where are we going, Mr. Brown? And he said, come on, come on, come on, come on. They have a party room. Nobody's even staying in the room. They have a party room right off of the pool area. So me and my cousin went over to get some drinks. And uh, they had a bathtub full of liquor. I was like, I ain't seen nothing like this since a Q party in 98. Whole bathtub full of ice and liquor and chasers. They did have water, though. That was different. People didn't include water bottles in the drink selection back in college. That's how you know we've grown now. Everybody's in their 40s or early 50s. Mr. Brown was in his late 40s. Some of his friends were in their early 50s. But we went and got a drink, and we came back, and we were just hanging out, just talking. I I thought I was on my regular behavior. I wasn't, like, you know, being surly and rude, which I also can be. But I wasn't, like, super flirty either. I thought I was on my nice behavior. But sometimes my friends were like, Demetria, be nice. Be like, okay, fine, I'm nice. But I thought that I was practicing my best nice behavior. They were actually fun guys. So Mr. Brown at one point had said to me, okay, you're moving to Ghana. How long are you going to be there? And I was like, I, I don't know. And he was like, well, how long were you in L.A.? And I was like, three years. And he was before that. And D.C., two years before that. New York. And he was like, you just don't stay still. And I was like, is there a reason that I should? You know, he was like, how's a man going to find you? If, if you never in one place, so I was like, I got to sit still and wait for a man. What, what kind of life is that? But he was like, how's a man going to find you if you keep moving? And I was like, he got to find me where I'm at. And I was like, you here now? So am I. Fast forward. He asked me at some point what I did. And I was like, oh, I'm a writer. You got to know me to get like the full answers. I was like, oh, pop culture and entertainment. He told me where he worked. Like, okay, fine. Maybe like five minutes later, his friend comes over and was like, what are you drinking? And I was like, oh, tequila. And he was like, tequila and what? And I was like, tequila, like I don't do chasers. And the reason I don't do chasers is solely because I don't want the empty calories. Like I'm there for the tequila. I'm not really there for the juice. The tequila with lime is what I was drinking. I think I had a grapefruit slice in there. So the guy goes, you one of them alpha females, huh? And I was like, excuse me? He was like, always working. Ain't got time to see nobody and do nothing. Don't like to cook. I mean, it's kind of true. But I was like, where is, where is this coming from? And his friend, not Mr. Brown, but another friend, pipes in and is like, yeah, you look like one of them women that's always be working. And I was like, well, who else going to pay these bills? Because if I don't pay them, are you paying them? And he was like, well, I ain't paying no woman's bills. Okay, so how the woman supposed to get her bills paid like, if she don't work? Explain it to me. You, he was like, you married? And I was like, are you married? He ain't married either. Why are you making it sound like it's bad that I'm not married? Well, sir, you are not married. We end up in a conversation about Father's Day. All the men had children. Again, everybody's in their late 40s, early 50s. Nary a ring between any of them, which is fine. Everybody with children does not have to get married. But I was like, you're like disparaging me for being like this alpha woman and for always working and for 
not being married, but I was like, but you're also not married. And, and also too, you haven't shown any signs of commitment. You got children, but never a wife in 49 years. You don't marry and, and has no demonstration of commitment. Huh? So that whole thing went left. Mr. Brown apologized for his friends afterward. He was like, I don't even know where that came from. That was just really, really left. And I was like, it was. I was like, men like to just get drunk at the pool and start berating women about their relationship status. I was like, I never said anything about a relationship one way or another. Every time it came up, like the men brought it up. I'm beginning to think that like men are actually the ones who are obsessed with talking about relationships. Because all the women I know be talking about money, food, travel, food, spas. That's the shit I be talking about with my girlfriends. It's not really a sit around and talk about a bunch of guys. But then when guys come around, that's what they want to talk about. A guy asked me too. They were going to watch. So, you know, I don't watch basketball. I didn't realize last night was like a big game. Like, I didn't even know game one happened, much less like game six was coming. I had no idea. So the guys were going to some sports bar to watch the game. And they were like, oh, did you want to come? And I was like, oh, no, like I have, you know, dinner plans. And so one of the guys was like, who are you going to dinner with? And I was like, oh, like, you know, a couple of my friends, blah, blah, blah. And he was like a bunch of women. And like, yeah, my friends are, are women and, and we're going to dinner. Like, what's what's the problem? And he was like, you ready to go to dinner with a bunch of women and then go to like a sports bar and like hang out with men. And I was like, uh, yeah. Am I supposed to like prioritize men and what men want to do in every aspect of my life? I'm so confused. I was like, sir, I came down here to sit by the pool in the sun and drink rosé. I did not come down here to have... I don't know, my, my marital status questioned or, or my priorities of, of spending time with men, seeing men, marrying men. I just wanted to drink this rosé in peace. And thank you for your tequila. <sighs> it's hard being a black woman some days. I'm like, sir, I'm on vacation. I mean, I got to work today. But work is getting dressed up and going to a party. Like, come on. It's a good job. Like, sir, you're stressing me. Poor Mr. Brown. He was just trying to holler. <laughs> His voice fucked all that up. And I was like, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm going to go upstairs and make calls back home. At least I know they ain't mad. I got a job. Damn it. What else is going on? I saw Baby Gia. Baby Gia. Baby Gia is 30 years old. She's still my baby. Gia Peppers. We talked about Gia because she was hosting the um, the Michelle Obama event last week. But she's down here too. I was leaving and she was coming in. I love that girl. I really, really do. I will say this about the gentleman that I met yesterday. Everybody except Mr. Brown got on my nerves. But we did have a good conversation about Father's Day. They wanted to know if I had a father. And I was like, yes, I have a daddy. And they were like, well, what are you getting him for Father's Day? And I was like, he doesn't want anything. All he wants is to see me. And I can't come home right now because I'm one in Miami for work. And then I got to fly back and like pack up my life. My father asked me to do two things before I go to Ghana. He asked me to come home for a couple weeks to stay at the house and spend time with him. And I was originally supposed to leave before his birthday. And he asked me if I could wait until after his birthday so we could do a big birthday dinner. And I told him I would stay for that. So those are the two things my father asked. So I was like, that's my father's Father's Day present. A couple of the guys were like, that ain't no present. And I said, like, what you mean it's not a present? And he said, what are you buying? What are you physically buying and sending to your father for Father's Day? Since you won't be there. Since you can't make it because you have to work. Sirs, bring it down to a 10. I was like, he doesn't want anything. I was like, literally, he has everything that he wants. And he was like, he don't want no steak. I'm supposed to send him a steak. Send him a gift card so he can go get some steak. And I was like, is that what men want for Father's Day? Is steak? He was like, don't get him no tie. I'm, I'm sick of ties. Sir, sir, nobody mentioned a tie. Calm down. Some steak. Okay, some steak. Anything else? And he said, some flowers. I said, some flowers? You want flowers for Father's Day? He said, I like flowers. Men like flowers. Men love flowers. Men love flowers? I've never heard because nobody ever sends us flowers. That don't mean we don't like them. Men love flowers. Men love flowers. Okay. You want some roses? I don't want no roses. What you want? Lilies. (laughs) Sir. Get away from my cabana, sir. Steak and lilies. Why lilies? They pretty. He said, I like a fragrant home. I was like, this is why I just go to the beach. This is why I don't go to the pool. Meet better quality people at the beach. Pool got everybody. You know, down to the beach. To just sit alone and hear the ocean. As opposed to men yelling at me about alpha females and finding husbands. And wanting steak and lilies for Father's Day. 
I am juggling so much on my schedule right now between working and packing and traveling so much. At the end of what can feel like an endless work day, the last thing I want to do is cook dinner. But when your fridge is empty, that urge to order in and skip the cooking happens all too often. But thanks to Daily Harvest, I don't have that takeout temptation anymore. Daily Harvest helps me keep my freezer fully stocked with options that are delivered right to my door and are delicious, nourishing, and ready in minutes. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, soups, flatbreads, snacks, smoothies, lattes, and more built on organic fruits and vegetables. Daily Harvest has delicious options for any time of day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and dessert. Everything is always on hand in your freezer and ready to enjoy when you need it, like their strawberry peach smoothie or tomato and basil flatbread. With Daily Harvest, I never have to question if the food I'm eating is good for me. They create food that's both good for my health and the health of the planet. By supporting farmers who invest in practices that increase biodiversity and improve the health of our soil and delivering food in recyclable and composting packaging, Daily Harvest does the work, so all you have to do is eat. New on the scene is their delicious harvest bakes for those moments when you're looking for homemade feels without any of the work. They are ready to bake veg-packed dishes sizzling with gourmet-level flavors that are big enough to share. You just won't want to. Avoid the takeout temptation and get Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash respectable to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash respectable for up to $40 off your first box. Dailyharvest.com slash respectable. I've tried a lot of different omega-3 supplements and I've got to say, Iwi is the best one I've ever used. Their secret is algae. It's a whole nother level than plain fish oil. Here's why I love Iwi. Do you know where fish get their omega-3s from? Algae. With Iwi, you go straight to the source and skip the middle fish and the nasty fishy burps. Iwi's proprietary form of algae leads to 50% more absorption, the world's highest absorption of any source of omega-3. Iwi's proprietary formula goes right to your bloodstream for more absorption, more health benefits. In a clinical study, Iwi cholesterol helped reduce bad VLDL cholesterol by 25% on average in just three months. What I love most about Iwi is no matter how old or young you are, you can reap the benefits of Iwi. If you're all about that healthy lifestyle, then adding Iwi to your self-care supplements is a must to support your heart, brain, vision, and overall wellness. And all of Iwi's products are plant-based, sustainably sourced, and farmed in the U.S. It's never too late or too early to start taking Iwi. Go to iwilife.com slash ratchet and use code ratchet to save 30% on your first purchase of any Iwi product. Take advantage of this limited time offer today. I-W-I-L-I-F-E dot com slash ratchet. Code ratchet for 30% off your first purchase. EWILife.com slash ratchet. Code ratchet. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What else is going on in the world? Something must be more entertaining than this. There's a new Drake album. That may be good black news for some people. I'm not the biggest Drake fan. Like, I like Drake. I'm not obsessed with Drake. But there's a new album. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. I didn't know it was coming. And apparently neither did anyone else. It was a surprise drop at midnight. I woke up this morning and everyone was talking about, oh, there's a Drake album. And I was like, I'm sorry, come again. Honestly, never mind. Is the name of the album. I had to go read it on CNN. I was like, what's the name of the album? Drake wrote an editor's note on his Apple Music Artist page. Only somebody like CNN would go catch this detail. Drake wrote, I let my humbleness turn to numbness at times, letting time go by, knowing I got the endurance to catch it another time. Nigga, what? I work with every breath in my body because it's the work, not air, that makes me feel alive. Okay, I understand that. Work makes me feel alive. Maybe Drake, too, is a workaholic alpha male. Nobody hates alpha males, though. 
I feel a way about the alpha female thing. I know I'm an alpha female. I'm fully aware of it. It's that people hate alpha females and it's derided. Like, dude just basically came up to me and was like, I hate you. Um, that's what I heard in my head by him like being like, oh, you're one of those alpha females. I'm like, here we fucking go. Kind of ruined my pool day, to be quite honest with you. Okay, back to Drake. Back to Drake. But yeah, the album is getting a mixed reaction. I saw some people being like, why is he singing? But I kind of like it when Drake sings. Like, singing Drake is my favorite Drake. So I may really like this album. I'll let you know next week. I get a chance to listen to it. I'm not going to make it to the pool today, but I will tomorrow. And I will on Sunday. I'll give a review of the album next week, but I'm excited there's a new album. I mean, not like, you know, jumping up and down doing cartwheels like I would for, say, like an Andre 3000 album. Hint, hint, Andre, if you'd like to drop an album for us. We are waiting with breath that is baited. That's a Sex in the City quote, by the way. Waiting with breath that is baited. I think it's the Russian. It was either the Russian or somebody speaking to the Russian. I think. The Russian's friends, maybe. The first time they met Carrie. Idris Elba for Gucci. I think it's Gucci. Is it Gucci watches? I saw the commercial. He had on a bright pink suit. And I was like, he could have everything except a bag over his head. And I would be excited. I love that man. My, um, he don't let me talk about him. So I can't say it. Never mind. Moving on. He asked me in our first conversation. He said, don't talk about me. Don't write about me. He's like, I'm here for you. That's, that's it. And I was like, "Uh oh, okay. Shit. That might be saying too much. Janet Jackson's on the cover of Essence. Don't love it. Sorry. I know she's headlining the Essence Music Festival at least one of the nights. I think the final night is New Edition and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, But Janet is performing at Essence, and she's currently on the cover of Essence, which I knew was going to happen. Nobody told me Janet was going to be on the cover, but last time Janet headlined Essence, Janet was on the cover. So I just kind of knew. I might have been working there at the time. Was I? The last time I saw Janet perform, it was at Essence. It was a good show. It wasn't Janet back in the day show, but in fairness, Janet is a woman of a certain age. I think, I mean, Janet's well into her 50s at this point. So she's just not giving the show that she did at 20 something or 30 something, which is fine. I like Janet. The show was just okay. Just keeping it a buck. I was happy to see Janet. That performance might have been right after her father passed away. And I mean, like, right after, as in, like, within like a week or two. Um, but she did the show anyway. So I ain't gonna judge her on that performance. Um, But it's Janet. If you have an opportunity to see Janet Jackson, you should always take it. Unfortunately, I will not be at Essence this year. Confirmed. The sponsor who I was um, negotiating to go down with, we couldn't find terms that worked for both of us. So they have gone in another direction. And I will be staying in L.A. to pack up my life before I move to another continent. It's for the best. I definitely did want to go to Essence. But it was doing way too much trying to go and then get back and then get all my stuff on a truck bound for the east in the time that I had available. Plus, my birthday is right after Essence Fest, and I wanted to do something to celebrate, and I was, like, trying to pull all this together. It's just crazy. I said it out loud to somebody that I was like, yeah, so I've come back from ABFF, and then I start packing, and then I'm going to Essence, and then everything should be mostly packed by the time I come back, and then the birthday party, and then the moving trucks, and then whatever, and they were like, you sound nuts. I knew it when I said it. I knew it when I said it. There's a new Beyonce album, not just yet, but coming soon. Renaissance is the name of the new album. I'm reading this on Billboard. The title is Everything We Know About Beyonce's Renaissance So Far. They know it's her seventh album. She told us about it on June 16th. So I had, like millions of other people, a sneaking suspicion that a new Beyonce project was coming because Beyonce had taken her picture um, out of her, what is it called? Her av- Is it avatar? Is that the right word for it? She's taken her picture down. So like all her social media pages were pictureless. She previously had a picture. She previously had a picture of herself. She took it all down. So that was like a clue for everyone that like something was coming. And then her mom posted something. I follow Mama Tina on on Instagram and her mom posted something like, oh, I missed the sound of Beyonce singing. And I was like, something's up. Something's up. And turns out something is up. It's her first solo album after six years. It doesn't say whether this is going to be another visual album because now when Beyonce drops something, I want the visuals as much as I want the music. And I was like, we are getting like, you know, like a a 30 minute video to accompany all these new songs. Right. Right. I haven't seen anything saying that yet, but I hope it happens. But the new album comes out on July 29th. Billboard notes that there is a British Vogue cover. I did see that. Beyonce looks really beautiful on the cover inside. Don't love it. But the cover is beautiful. 
And there's one picture inside where she has on all pink, like pink latex. And I want to say it's just from the boobs up. It's a really pretty shot. I really love that one. The other ones, hmm. Mm. She has those bangs, those those tiny bangs again. Mm. 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 Beyonce with bad bangs is still like bad B. You know, like I'm not I'm not saying she's she's unattractive. They're just it's not my favorite look on her. Do we have any other details here about the album? Nothing in particular. The Billboard article is just going on to talk more about British Vogue, 28 time Grammy winner posing among gilded set pieces. Featuring horses, motorcycles, oversized disco balls. It feels old-fashioned and futuristic. I read somewhere else that it's supposed to be giving like the early 90s club kid. Like that was the look that they were going for for British Vogue. I guess. And I, I didn't love it. And um, I'm not going to pretend I love it. So, yeah. There is an article accompanying this British Vogue piece. It's not just a bunch of beautiful photos. Which this cover with this horse and this headpiece is life. Life. She looks so good. But the uh, the editor-in-chief of British Vogue, Edward Innenful, he wrote the cover story himself for the Beyonce. It doesn't really give up that many details. He did go to Beyonce and Jay-Z's Los Angeles home. He did note that the home has a minimalist aesthetic. He talked about the photo shoot with Beyonce. Jay-Z and the kids showed up to surprise her. He talked about the album. He didn't give too many details. Even though he listened to it, he didn't give too many details. He did call this project, quote, her most ambitious musical project to date. He says the culture shifting, Grammy dominating queen bee of all she surveys has trained her considerable artillery on America's musical soundscape of the late 20th century. You mean like the 1990s? (laughs) You could just say that. makes it sound so far away. He makes it sound so far away. It was such a distant past. The late 20th century when I graduated high school and college. Okay. He talks about the fashion choices for the photo shoot. He talks about her showing up to the photo shoot in a white t-shirt, skinny jeans, and a Louboutin heel, hair in a ponytail. There's really not a lot of details here. He talks about being at Beyonce's dinner table on a Sunday night. He says he's stunned at how relaxed she is. He says her house is quote and unquote impressively minimalist with acres of white walls, gleaming glass and beautiful art. I would have loved to see this house. He says he dined on a scrumptious dinner of ribs, (laughs) black people, ribs, cream corn, black people, peas and mashed potatoes. He says, I'm not sure the mood could be any cozier. He says Beyonce was walking around with loose hair, not a stitch of makeup, wearing a hoodie and just being herself. He says her laughter is so infectious, her skin so glowy, she honestly looks like a teenager. There's literally one quote from Beyonce in this entire article, which is about a thousand words. She's referring to either her family or her house or maybe both. And she describes them as my earth, my heart, my soil, and my sanity. That's literally the only quote from Beyonce. Everything else is the editor-in-chief editorializing. Let's see if we have any other details. I've read this before. This is not the first time I'm reading it. I'm just scrolling through it on my phone to pick out the important parts. At the house, she plays the album for him. He describes, quote, soaring vocals and fierce beats combined. And in a split second, I'm transported back to the clubs of my youth. He's about my age, so that'd be the 90s. He says, quote, I want to get up and start throwing moves. It's music I love to my core, music that makes you rise, that turns your mind to cultures and subcultures, to our people past and present, music that will unite so many on the dance floor. Music that touches your soul. That's a hell of a description. I mean, I'm already excited about this album. You really he really could have just said, it's dope. And I would have been like, great, I can't wait. So we'll see. I'm not like a, a, a card carry member of the Beehive. I do like to attend the concerts and watch all the visual albums. I don't attempt to do the choreography. I draw the line there. But I am a certified Beyonce fan. Last but not least. Is this last but not least? Well, we'll talk about it. We'll see if anything else comes after this. There's a few more things on the list, but I don't know if we'll get to them. Because I need to edit this podcast and then go get dressed for this event tonight. But I think this is definitely worth mentioning. It's the end of an era. The Wendy Williams show has come to a close after more than a decade. 13 seasons, I believe. I did not get a chance to watch the episode. I didn't get up till late. It had already aired. 
and, and keep it 100, I really didn't have an intent to watch it. I'd read earlier in the week that Wendy Williams wouldn't be participating in the finale. So I was like, what's, what's the point? I do have friends that work on the show and they did share some information with me. But I was told a while ago that Wendy would be unable, not unwilling, unable to participate in the finale. And also a correction. Previously, I said it had been 13 years. It's actually been 14 years of the Wendy Williams show. And again, I'm reading this on the Daily Beast. There's an article called The Messy and Fabulous Legacy of the Wendy Williams Show. The Daily Beast notes that the show ran for 14 years, that there were 2,797 how you doings from the show. But they chronicle the ups and downs that have been the Wendy Show. And, and most recently in this final season that Wendy has not been able to participate in because of various issues. There's her battle with Graves' disease, which is, which is public. She also had COVID, which further complicated her health. And there's just some other things that are going on behind the scenes. Um, so unfortunately, Wendy was not able to participate in the final episode. The Daily Beast notes that Sherry Shepard, who will not be replacing Wendy, but will be getting her own show called Sherry, that will run in the Wendy time slot later this year. But two separate shows. Sherry is not taking over Wendy. Wendy is ending and Sherry is starting. That's an important distinction to make for Sherry. But they said at the top of the final episode, which is hosted by Sherry Shepard, Shepard thanked the crew, the guests, the viewers, and Wendy herself. Shepard said, quote, There is nobody like Wendy Williams. From her days on the radio to ruling daytime talk for 13 seasons, Wendy earned her title as the queen of all media. The Daily Beast not holding any cut cards. They said Wendy, in reference to the show, quote, came to a close with a whimper in the form of a flimsy video montage dedicated to Williams and her show's incredible legacy. No appearance, not even a pre-recorded message from the star of the show, the one who built its audience and carved out a new space in daytime for those who wanted a no-holds-barred host who wasn't afraid to speak her mind and pick up the pieces afterward. Needless to say, Wendy Williams deserved better. End quote. The article goes on to talk about the legacy of the Wendy Williams show and, and Wendy Williams, her legacy as well, and how treacherous the landscape can be for talk show hosts. They note that Katie Couric, Anderson Cooper, and, and Meredith Vieira all had talk shows that didn't make it, and yet Wendy's did. And they talk about why Wendy not just survived, but, but thrived for so many years. Um, it's a really good article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's a very good read if you're interested in Wendy Williams. Um, I think it's important to note that <laughs> I had my, my back and forth with, um, with Wendy as a host. Sometimes I liked her, sometimes I didn't, but I always tuned in. And for a very long time, probably about a good 10 years, when something crazy happened, even if I was like, oh, fuck Wendy, Wendy's terrible, I hate Wendy, Wendy does too much, M Wendy's mean. But whenever something happened, I'd be like, I can't wait to hear what Wendy got to say about this shit. In the article, they note that, um, that Wendy does something very rare with her show and that she, whereas most talk show hosts do like a five minute monologue and then they move on to interviews or something else. They note that Wendy, that Wendy typically did 20 to 30 minutes by herself and how hard it is to just, you know, talk continuously, even about various topics, but just to speak continuously for 20 to 30 minutes um, is harder than most people realize. And you have to be really, really good at what you do and, and have your thoughts organized well in order to do it. As you are a faithful listener to this podcast, I'm going to guess that if you made it this far into the episode, that's what I do every episode. I have the benefit of not being in front of a camera and I can go back and edit my thoughts and such. But speaking at length for a really long time is something that I do because I watched Wendy. When I was thinking about how to put this podcast together and the things that I wanted to do and, and what was, I thought, missing from the landscape and what I could offer to it, I did watch Wendy Williams and others. So just very personally, Wendy has been an inspiration um, for me to do what I do. Wendy was also my very first celebrity interview when I was still in college. I used to write for One World magazine, Russell Simmons magazine. And like maybe like week two of my internship, Raquel Cepeda was the editor in chief of the magazine. Then she sent me out to interview Wendy. And I, I went up to the station. I think she just got back from Philly at that time. She'd only been back on the air less than a month. But I went up to the station to interview her. She was interviewing Petey Pablo. So in between her interview with him during the commercial break, I would interview her. 
And then she would go back live and she'd interview Petey and then she'd come back to me. And she was just back and forth, off and on, off and on for like maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Like it was fascinating watching her go. I'm sorry to see Wendy's show go. I do wish that she had been there to say goodbye. I think after the long run of her show and the success of her show, I would have loved to see her and I'd love to see her sign off. From what, from what I hear from behind the scenes, everyone would have loved for that to happen. It just was not possible. It wasn't in the best interest of anybody for it to be done. I wish I could say more. Um, I give commentary. I'm not a gossip blogger. Um, I don't operate this podcast like a, a journalist. I aim for accuracy for ethical reasons, but I don't consider myself a journalist when I'm doing this podcast. Oh, Wendy. I don't know why I just got like emotional. I wish her the best. I really, really do. I've always been a big fan of planning ahead, scheduling trips months in advance, plotting out my next career move, figuring out what I'm doing for dinner while I'm still eating breakfast. But I've never thought much about planning for kids. That's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means. And what I love most, you can speak one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same info at $159, a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet, you can get $20 off your test. If you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off of the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at the doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet. That's modernfertility.com slash ratchet. When you run a business, time seems more precious. Every misplaced moment feels like a missed opportunity, a lost chance to make your business better or even just to step away and recharge. ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers like you more time to do what they really love, unless what you really love is managing every single detail of order fulfillment. I've used ShipStation since the very beginning of my online business. Every piece of ratchet and respectable merchandise has been shipped through ShipStation. All those manual tasks eating up your time, ShipStation is really good at those. So let ShipStation handle all your shipping and handling and get back to what you're good at, growing your business. My favorite thing about ShipStation is saving money. You get deeply discounted shipping rates normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies. And you can easily compare carriers, rates, and delivery times, so it's easy to choose the best option for every shipping scenario. In fact, 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. It's time to let go of all those shipping tasks. ShipStation can do it better and faster. Sign up using promo code RESPECT for a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com and start saving time with every shipment. That's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless, and it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in RESPECT. Ship Station. Make ship happen. From Wondery, Call Me Curious is a podcast hosted by Nikki Boyer that finally gives you the definitive answers to life's burning questions. I love Nikki. I thought there was no one more random than me. She is. We're all on 24-7 information overload on our news feeds, in our inboxes, on TikTok. It's so hard to know what is real and what isn't when it comes to health, pop culture, and relationships. That's why Nikki is bringing you Call Me Curious. 
Every week, Nikki dives into all the things you've heard about but didn't really know about. That's right. No more nodding along at parties or running to the bathroom to Google. What is cryptocurrency? You'll learn and laugh along the way as she explores life's little mysteries and the internet's hottest topics. Like, does intermittent fasting work or is it true you can't die in your dreams? You'll find out with Nikki and some of her hilarious friends on her podcast, Call Me Curious. Listen to Call Me Curious on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Last but not least, because I've been skipping this topic and it is an important one, I want to speak about this feud between Nas, Little Nas X, and BET. We mentioned before that the nominations had come out for the upcoming BET Awards and Little Nas X did not receive a nomination. And it was crazy to me and crazy to Little Nas X because he tweeted about it. He was like, I've been nominated for Grammys. Like I had like three songs in the Billboard Top 10 and I'm a black artist. How is it that I don't have a nomination for the BET Awards? Little Nas X being the professional troll that he is, he released a, I don't know if it's a full song, but he put a video on his Instagram page And the first words of it were him chanting, fuck BET. He clearly feels a way about not being nominated, which I think he should. Because again, how is it you get nominated for Grammys? How is it you have three songs in the Billboard Top 10 and you can't get a nomination as a black person at the BET Awards? Also, while there's a white person who got nominated for a BET Award who doesn't have your hits, who also might be featured on one of his hits, now that I think about it. So... He said, fuck BET. He's got millions of followers on Instagram. He's also got this new blonde hair. I just pulled up his pictures. I do not like this hair. I'm a, he's a young man. I, he needs to experiment and express the way that he feels the need to express. I support his artistic expression, but this is not my favorite expression of his. I just I like the pre- previous expression with his grown out black hair. But here we are nonetheless. I'm sure everybody doesn't like my artistic expressions as well. I give the grace that I would like to receive. Um, It's just hair. But Little Nas X went off on BET. And BET, because, you know, 12.4 million people follow Little Nas X. And everybody reported on him making that fuck BET song. BET did did see and hear that Little Nas X was like, fuck you. Actually, the song is called Late to the Party. But the chorus is fuck BET. But BET did respond. They released a statement and they began, quote, we love Little Nas X. They noted that he was nominated for Best New Artist for a BET Award in 2020. They said, quote, we proudly showcased his extraordinary talent and creativity on the show twice. He performed Old Town Road with Billy Ray Cyrus at the BET Awards 2019. And his BET Awards 2021 performance was a highlight for our show. No one cheered louder that night than BET. They added, quote, unfortunately... This year, he was not nominated by BET's Voting Academy, which is comprised of an esteemed group of nearly 500 entertainment professionals in the fields of music, television, film, digital marketing, sports journalism, public relations, influencers, and creative arts. No one from BET serves as a member of the Voting Academy. So basically, the people that pick our awards did it, not us. But you picked those people. And I say this with love for BET. I used to work at BET for two years. BET paid my bills. As a general rule, I don't go after anybody who paid my bills. It's not me going after BET. This is me pointing out something that's problematic and needs to be called out. Trying to pass the buck to your voting academy that you picked. I don't know what other reason that he would not be considered for an award other than blatant homophobia. Like, again, in the last year, he's had three songs in the Billboard Top 10 and he's a black artist. And your whole voting academy comprised of like all these people overlook Little Nas X? Something's wrong with your voting academy. They're not in touch or not in tune or they're wildly homophobic. You tell me which one it is. The statement goes on to say, quote, at BET, we are passionate advocates for the wonderful diversity that exists within our community. We are committed to using all of our platforms to provide visibility and inclusion for all the many intersections of the black community. I'm reading this on the root. If I didn't say that before, it's an article by Stephanie Holland from June 8th. The title is BET responds after Little Nas X attacks network and new song. Stephanie had the same reaction to BET's statement that I did. Quote, sure, BET. That's what Stephanie editorialized. She said, quote, I might be able to believe that the network is truly invested in wonderful diversity, 
if it didn't nominate the same people every year, regardless of what their contributions are that year. And you can release all the statements you want, but the bottom line is you would rather recognize a white rapper than a queer black one. Little Nas X is one of the most authentic, innovative artists in music. He doesn't fit in some pre-made box and he's not trying to. If BET and other black award shows can't see past his sexuality, then there's definitely a bigger problem we need to seriously talk about. And frankly, it's their loss because not having him appear will make your show a lot less interesting and fun. I agree with Stephanie. They should have nominated him. And if their voting academy did whatever list that they did and, and they came back and he wasn't nominated, somebody should have been like, hey, where's little Nas X? Because he had like one of the biggest albums of the year and it's weird that he's not on this list. Maybe they need a little more oversight over there. I'm just saying. All right, that's the episode for this week. I'm about to chop this up and edit it and then, and then go get my ass in a makeup chair so I can make myself beautiful for this award ceremony tonight. I ain't being awarded. I'm just going to watch people be awarded, but I want to look cute when I clap. Last but not least, if you have not picked up your merchandise for Ratchet and Respectable, there's still Cut the Check and Interested Men Act Interested Shirts. Everything else is gone. I told you I had to clear out this warehouse and you were helping me do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I definitely appreciate you. If you want to support the podcast, this is the best way to support. Help me clear out this warehouse. I put everything on sale for you so it's not going to hurt your pockets. But please support the podcast. Please help me clear out the rest of the merchandise in this warehouse so I don't have to pack it up and send it back to my parents' basement. I need you to help me. Help make this move easier for me. So if you have not picked up your merchandise for Ratchet and Respectable, your interested men act interested, and your cut the check, please do so at DemetriaLLucas.com. All right, that's the episode. I'm about to go get my ass in a makeup chair. Talk soon. Bye.